Good afternoon, everybody. And this week, Hyundai has sent me over a model of the Elantra that I have been really excited to test. A lot of you have been requesting it nonstop ever since the company showed us this car last year. This is the 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport. Uh, this is the new high performance version of the Elantra. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my top five likes and top five dislikes. So let's get started. Now to kick things off, let's talk about the top five things that I like about the 2017 Elantra Sport. And number five is going to go to the styling of this car. I really love the changes that Hyundai made to the Elantra for this sport trim from the aggressive front and rear fascia, these side rocker panels, these 18 inch wheels that fill out the wheel wells nicely. The whole car just has a aggressive, sporty, uh, mature look to it that the kind of boy racer SI never really had, but it also is a little bit more aggressive looking than what you find on a uh, GLI or GTI. Number four is going to go to the comfortable and spacious cabin. Now, the Elantra sedan already has one of the roomier cabins in the industry for this class, and the Elantra Sport basically ups that a little bit more. You get aggressive seat bolstering, red stitching, this flat bottom wheel, and in typical Hyundai fashion, the company throws in a lot of standard equipment list built into this very attractive base price. Number three is going to go to the responsive turbocharged 1.6 liter engine and that really nice sounding tuned exhaust. Now, Hyundai works worked extremely hard to get the exhaust sound right on this car, and it really shows. It's a surprising car, especially when you hear it from the outside. When you combine it with this 201 horsepower turbo, it makes the Elantra Sport one of the peppiest options you can buy. Now, number two is going to go to something that actually surprised me. It's this slick shifting six-speed manual. Now, I have driven Hyundai stick shifts in the past. They were always a little bit vague, a little bit rubbery, but the company seems to have gotten it right with this six-speed. It's very European in its feel. It has nice, slick, direct shifts. It could be a little bit shorter, but overall, I'm really impressed with the shifter and clutch accent action of the Elantra Sport. It's an easy car to drive, especially if you're trying to teach someone how to drive stick for the first time. And finally, last but not least, is another uh, like that really surprised me. It's the responsive handling, uh, great ride quality, and excellent steering feel that Hyundai has built into this sport. Now, Hyundai typically has not gotten that combination right. However, in the last couple of years, they've hired really good people to take over uh, their ride and handling department, their styling department, uh, and it shows. This Elantra has a fully independent rear suspension, uh, unlike the torsion beam on the standard Elantras. It's got a great ride quality. It's responsive. The chassis feels playful. The steering gives you lots of feedback, and overall, you're going to be extremely surprised. This is not drive like any Elantra you have driven in the past. Now let's change gears here. Let's talk about the top five things that I dislike about the 2017 Elantra Sport. And number five is going to go to the street presence of this name. Now, if you guys remember the Elantra Sport uh, first came to the States like a couple of years ago, uh, and it was really just a Elantra with a bigger engine, didn't really have any upgrades to it to give it that street cred. You're still gonna have to deal with that uh, in today's world. A lot of enthusiasts simply just don't know what Hyundai has done to this new Sport, which is partially the reason why I'm showing you guys this video. Uh, you're going to have to deal with that in a couple years, especially when Hyundai starts rolling out high performance models. Number four is going to go to the lack of available full LED headlights or just LED headlights in general. Now, don't get me wrong, the Elantra Sports comes standard with bi xenon headlights, but they don't swivel. There's no automatic high beam function. And a lot of newer cars today are just switching to an LED. It's more efficient, it's brighter, it's just newer technology. So I would like to see Hyundai add LED headlights to the Elantra when they refresh it in a couple years. Now, number three is going to go to the fact that this car could use a little bit more power. I mean, sure, it's got 201 horsepower. That is a substantial increase over the previous um, or the regular Elantras. However, a lot of the competitors like the GLI, the GTI, the upcoming Civic Si, they should have more than 200 horsepower, like 210, 220. Uh, expect to see Hyundai introduce something like that with an all new end performance model that's still a couple years away. Number two is going to go to a lack of available driver assistance tech, like active driver assistance tech. Now this car is available with blind spot monitor in rear cross traffic alert, which is what my car has. Um, however, you cannot get any um, automatic emergency braking. There's no lane departure, lane keep assist technology, no adaptive cruise control. Those features are only available on the Elantra Limited. So if you guys want the Sport, just know that you cannot get those features uh, with this added power. 
And my number one dislike about the Elantra Sport is the fact that Hyundai didn't include a limited slip differential on this car. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll talk about that in the test drive a little bit later on in uh, my next video. However, uh, this car could certainly use it. It doesn't have as much, you know, as bad as torque steer and wheel hop as the Veloster Turbo R spec that I drove. It puts the power down a lot better. However, it really just begs you, or it makes you curious for an end performance model because this chassis can really handle it. Uh, and Hyundai has really done a good job with tuning it. It just brings the experience down a little bit when you go into a corner, you floor it, and the car has trouble putting power down. But that does it for my Redline Top 5 of this 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport. Now keep in mind, I will be doing a full Redline review on this car. Just keep a lookout for the next couple of days. However, until then, if you guys are looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.